वेलकम बैक नाउ दैट ट्रेड्स टाइप्स पर्सनालिटी काइंड ऑफ हैज सराउंडेड यू एंड आई आल्सो टोल्ड दैट टाइप्स एंड ट्रेड्स आर टू डिफरेंट थिंग्स दो दे लुक सिमिलर एंड दे काइंड ऑफ पीपल डिफाइन देम और पुट देम इनटू वन बकेट दीस टू आर डिफरेंट थिंग्स नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द टाइप्स सिंस वी हैव डिस्कस द ट्रेड्स we are now going to see what are the personality types and i am going to take since i told you there are a lot of scholars and researchers and psychologists who have done study on personality and on these subtopics personality traits types one and so forth i am going to take into account few psychologists here i have just taken one and we are going to discuss the types of personality this is actually taught to psychology students and mba students when they take up um, organizational behavior as a paper but i have made these simpler for you to understand so that you know that these are the types of personality and this forms my personality and through examples in a simple language i'll tell you so do not worry now difference between types and traits types are more qualitative than traits traits are like quantitative you saw now there are so many traits we talked about happy introvert extrovert social uh, gregarious solitary imagine uh, imaginary factual so there are some uh, there could be some in fact there was a researcher who came up with 4000 personality traits so these are words that define you however personality type is very very qualitative okay and this talks about your growing ages what all defines you okay so we are going to look at three major types of personality and uh, this is the study was done by sigmund freud who is one of the noted psychologists so whenever you take psychology as a paper or when you grow up and choose mba as a subject uh, sorry as a program you will see that sigmund freud is always quoted okay in management sigmund freud is quoted he, because he is a very very noted and uh, very very established psychologist so i'm going to take his theory of personality type and tell you what kind of personality types do we have according to sigmund freud human personality is very complex and you would see you would say my god he is so complicated she is so complicated all of us are we have got so many things inside us half of it there is there is a gentleman there, there were two gentlemen joe and harry they had come up with a window joe harry window and it talks about four windows okay i know you know means i, I know about myself you know about myself you know i know okay both of us know about myself i do not know you know so there are certain traits which you know i do not know and then i do not know you do not know so it's a black spot there are certain things which neither people around me know nor i know okay so that complex human personality is and has more than a single component you cannot say that this is your personality type this is the component that you have only this no it's a mix you've always seen all the examples that i've given it's a mix you have got so many traits which are uh, mixed and then you become a the person the identity that you have in his famous psychoanalytic theory freud suggests that personality is composed of three elements and this is very important so rather than quantitatively defining personality types he says a human has three types of personality three personality types what are these these are known as id this id that you see no id okay id ego and super ego now you will wonder that you have always seen he is very egoistic we use it wrongly the word is used wrongly id when you, when we go and look into each of these um, types separately you will understand that id super ego ego actually form your identity form your personality type okay these elements work together to create complex human behaviors all of these things when you mix together you become a complex human being so our identity our personality is not made of one single component it's kind of that is why he has broadly defined it into three and then all these three put together makes us what we are gives an identity to us and these three are very uh, 
I found it very interesting when I was studying about um, Idigo Supuru and organizational behavior and psychology during my MBA days. What is this id? I'm sure you're hearing this for the first time. Id. Id is the source of all psychic energy, making it the primary component of personality. Don't go deep into the definition. It's the only component of personality that is present from birth. You can focus on this. Only component of our personality which is present from birth. Okay? Source of all psychic energy that we have okay, in our body. And that makes the, the primary component. The, the id forms the primary component. And it is always the only component that is present from birth. This aspect of personality is entirely unconscious and includes instinctive and primitive behaviors. So, your primitive years when you were born, this particular type of personality makes those behaviors, form those behaviors. So, this aspect of personality is entirely unconscious. You do not know what you are doing. It is unconscious because these are primitive years of your growth. When you were very small, very small, right after your birth, you do not know what you are doing. You cannot ask your mind to behave the way you behave when you grow up. Okay, So, these are the primitive years, your beginning years of life. And that is why it forms the, it is the first primary component and uh, is only present since birth. It is driven by the pleasure principle and this is very exciting actually. The pleasure principle. So, we call it pleasure, pleasure principle which strives for immediate gratification. I want this means I want this. Of all desires, wants and needs. When you were born, just ask your parents and your parents must have told this story to you. Every time that you were hungry, what would you do? You would call your mama, mama please give me food or you will call your papa. All you used to do was shout at top of your voice, cry as much as you can, as hard as you can, as loud as you can. The moment you used to cry, your mama used to come and feed you because you want instant gratification. Immediately I want my hunger to stop. Immediately I want someone to feed me. That's why it's known as the formation of your identity from the primitive years, from the growing years. That is why it's known as pleasure principle. So your, your personality, the moment you get that gratification, you are at ease. You feel nice. I want food means I want food. At any condition, I want food. Now, let's say when you grow up and when you are in school right now, you feel hungry. Do you start crying and shouting? Do you do that subconsciously, knowingly? Do you do that? You will wait for the class to get over, then you will open your tiffin and then eat. So, primitive years you do this, you get that pleasure principle, instant gratification you want. The moment you grow up, you do not want that gratification because now you know what are the set of behaviors you need to show. That has not been taught to you. You acquire that. No one says, no, don't shout. Now just imagine when this small child, when you were small and you, you were crying, when you were uh, hungry and then your mama says, why are you crying? Please stop. I will give you food one hour after one hour. Will you even listen? Do you even have the capacity to listen? You will not be able to understand only what, what is being said. You will cry more. You have not understood anything. All you want is my food. I want instant gratification. But when you grow older and older and older, when the stage that you are in, you would never do that. Unless, of course, when your cognitive ability is a bit lower. So for special children, uh, you will see that they cannot distinguish between what is right, what is wrong, what kind of behavior they need to show, what kind of behavior they do not need to show. Even if, when they grow up, if they are hungry, they want that instant gratification because by some reason that mental cognitive or mental cognition is not developed. Okay, They are not supposed to be blamed for that, no, nor the parents. It is how God has made some of us. Okay. If these needs are not satisfied immediately, the result is a state of anxiety or tension. You will start shouting, you will start crying, you will start throwing things. Uh, even when you are some five or six months old also, you would depict the same behavior. But as a newborn child, my God, the kind of um, tension they create when they are hungry, you can never imagine. 
An increase in hunger or thirst should produce an immediate attempt to eat or drink. This happens when you grow up also. If you're feeling hungry, you want instant gratification, but you do not behave that way. That is why id is the formation of your early personality type or early years of your growth or your identity. Now comes the ego. What is this ego? The ego develops from the id and ensures now id is I want instant gratification. Otherwise, there will be tension, there will be anxiety and that is why the child shouts and cries. Not only for hunger, if the child let's say has pooped or peed because the child cannot help itself, right? Instantly, immediately it wants to be cleaned. Nothing doing, you cannot through reasoning, logic, emotion, you cannot make the child understand, no, 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 no. give me some time, no. I want to be cleaned means to be cleaned, okay? The ego develops from the id and ensures that the impulses of the id, okay, instant gratification, that is the impulse, I want it right away, can be expressed in a manner acceptable in the real world. Why are you not shouting or crying when you are hungry now? Because your ego, that the ego formation has happened and you know how to behave in a situation. The principle of pleasure or gratification is still there. But you know what is right and what is wrong. Okay? The ego functions in the conscious, pre-conscious and unconscious mind. Unlike id. Your ego is conscious. conscious. This is what I should do. This is what how I should behave. And this comes through environment and through nurture. Your mama t tells you. When you grow and start understanding things, this is how you should behave, this is how you should do, and then you adapt it. Okay? The ego is the component of personality that is responsible for dealing with reality rather than becoming exciting, uh, excited and anxious. Now you know, okay, this is, this is how things go. This is how things work. So my anxiousness, my anxiety will not help. My instant gratification will not help. It's just that it is the horse and ego is the rider. Okay? The horse has to move on, right? But it should not deviate from its path. The horse rider takes care of it. So your, your mental stability of how things work, what you should be doing, how you should be behaving, ego takes care of that. Okay? And that is why it's conscious, pre-conscious and unconscious mind. Whenever you are, even when you are unconscious, let's say something has happened to me, I'm unconscious, even then, your mind does something, okay? The ego is the component of personality that is responsible for dealing with reality. You now know this is how real life works. Unlike when you were a small child, newborn baby, crying for food or crying for um, attachment when you want your mama to be with you. The ego operates based on the reality principle, as I told you, which strives to satisfy the id's desire in realistic and socially appropriate ways. So if I'm hungry, id forms that foundation that if you're hungry, this is how reality works. You cannot instantly when you're school, in class and teacher is looking at you, mischievously you can do that. But when the class is going on, you cannot eat. When you're at office uh, in, a very, in a very important meeting, when numbers are being discussed, when you're trying to formate, formulate strategies, you feel hungry. And then you say, uh, stop all this, I, I need to eat now. That is now how real life works. Okay, so that fo foundation of how real life works, it believes in reality. Your ego principle believes in reality. The reality principle weighs, so what was id? Id was pleasure principle. And what is uh, ego? Ego is reality principle. Makes you believe what is real and what is unreal. The reality principle weighs the costs and benefits of an action before deciding to act upon or aban abandon impulses. So, let's say you are really hungry, really, really hungry when the class is going on or the meeting is going on or some, something very serious is being discussed. You cannot concentrate. You literally cannot concentrate if, uh, if you're hungry. And then you feel that I need to go out and eat or I need to start eating my tiffin here. Then your id, uh, sorry, your ego will tell you, your id is saying, pleasure principle, I want it, gratification, instant gratification. Your ego is telling you, no, this is not the right way. That is your mind is telling you, this is not the right way. This is not how it works. 
you can only eat unless it is specified okay if you're hungry you can eat but that is not the rule the rule is when the class gets over you will have to open your tiffin and eat so your ego state of mind tells you this is not how this is not how it works you can only eat once this class gets over okay so ways you will you will weigh shall i eat or not what happens if i eat so your your ego will tell you if you open your tiffin and eat what will happen your teacher will ask you to go out of the class or she will complain to your parents so you will weigh on the options before taking an impulsive decision you will always try to weigh the uh, options shall i eat if i eat what will happen if i don't eat what will happen if i eat what could be the options i can be thrown out of the class thrown out of the class I, my parents could be called i could be uh, asked to leave the class so you will weigh and then you will see no it's better if i wait so your ego state of mind makes you ready with logic and reality in many cases the its impulses can be satisfied through a process of delayed gratification the ego will eventually allow the behavior but only in the appropriate time and place now this cannot happen to very very growing years but what happens with animals when you have a pet at home and you want to train that pet uh, there is a, there is a thing called classical conditioning and what is done is you will only be given food if you do this task so that is the behavior you are trying to set in okay in many cases the its impulses can be satisfied through a process of delayed gratification now let's say um if you can try it with newborn babies also you are trying to make the baby realize and the baby will start realizing though the baby cannot talk that if i shout more maybe i'll not be able to get my food okay this normally parents do not do this with their children you can do this with pets because you want to train them none of your parents will try this out for you it can be done is what the study says that through delayed gratification the impulses can be satisfied so in many cases the its impulses can be satisfied through a process of delayed gratification the ego will eventually allow the behavior but only in the appropriate time and place so as i was giving an example of when you are eating when you are hungry and your class is going on and you will weigh the options so you your it, uh, your ego will tell you what is the appropriate time and place to do this so that instant gratification can be delayed now finally comes the super ego what is the super ego the super ego begins to emerge at around age 5 so it is from 1 uh, from 0 to 1 and a half years of age then comes your um, super ego which is from around age of 5 the super ego holds the internalized moral standards so you start understanding okay that this is right this is wrong and ideals that acquire from our parents and society our sense of right and wrong so we try to understand the sense of right and wrong the super ego provides guidelines for making judgments so right wrong so judgment you you're weighing the whether this is right or this is wrong okay and this develops at the age of 5 the super ego again has two parts the conscience includes information about things that are viewed as bad by parents and society so you, your parents your first school is your home your parents tell you if you behave like this this is not the right thing this is the right thing you should not shout shouting is bad uh, answering back to parents is bad fighting is bad so they will set morals for you which is right which is wrong which is good which is bad they will set these morals for you and that is how your values beliefs are set in by parents and society your teachers are why are you behaving like this this is not the right uh, right kind of behavior they will tell you this is right this is wrong parents will tell you this is right this is wrong society will tell you maybe uh, your uncle aunt your neighbor they will tell you what is right what is wrong okay these behaviors are often forbidden and lead to bad consequences punishments or feelings of guilt and remorse so it's told that these kind of behaviors okay fighting shouting these kind of bad behaviors we we teach you in your formative years of growth lead to bad these can lead to bad consequences so should not do this you should avoid this the ego ideal includes the rules and standards for behaviors that the ego aspires to okay so super ego is formed when you are at the age of 5 right wrong judgment 
the interaction of the id, ego and superego. These aspects are dynamic, keep changing and always interacting to influence an individual's overall personality. You have grown up, but that instant pleasure principle, uh, instant gratification and pleasure principle is still there. But your ego tells you what is right and what is wrong. Your super ego tells, asks you to judge. Okay. With many competing forces, it is easy to see how conflict might arise between the id, ego and super ego. So you will see your mind always has this battle, right, wrong, good, bad. Okay, um, uh, instant gratification, judgment principle, all these things your mind will keep telling you. And there's always a tussle between these two, these three types. Freud used the term ego strength to refer to the ego's ability to function despite these dwelling forces. So, what norm, normal human, normally we do is, our ego kind of overpowers id and superego. That is, it, that's why it's called uh, term uh, ego strength to refer to the ego's ability. So, ego is something that overpowers the other two types to function despite these dwelling forces. There is a lot of pressure from id and superego, but ego takes kind of a, a shape and it says it takes power above these two. A person who has good ego strength can effectively manage these pressures, while a person with too much or too little ego strength can be unyielding or disruptive. So, if your ego, that type, is more, you can control certain situations, instant gratification, judgment, right, wrong, your ego will help you. But if your ego strength is low, if your ego strength is really low, then you will have difficulty in managing the pressure that your it puts on you, okay, or super ego puts on you. While a person with too much or too little ego strength can be unyielding. Too much of anything is bad, so a moderate level of uh, ego strength that you have will help you fulfill your roles, your identity. But too much, that's why we say he is egoistic. When we say he is egoistic, what we mean is he doesn't have control. You, his ego, the normal, the ego strength is not there because his ego strength is really more. Okay, or the ego strength is really less. So, in both the situations, uh, you tend to kind of bow down to your super ego and your id. So, with too much or too little ego strength can be unyielding or disruptive. It can disrupt your normal behavior, normal how you should be behaving. Your, if you do not have a proper ego strength, too much or too less of it, okay, too much or too less does not give the desired results. Okay? So, Sigmund Freud, Freud's uh, rule or uh, type of personality is what we study and we learn from and we say that your ego, ego strength helps building the foundation and tells you, weigh, asks you to weigh the options. That is how you use logic. That is how you do not want in instant gratification. Now, before I end, I would just like to give you um, a situation that how at times your ego can, uh, I mean ego strength being low and high can disrupt you. This instant gratification could be anything, right? And here we are discussing though you are, you are children, but it is a thing that we should discuss. Whenever you see there is a child abuse and it is important for you, your school must have taught you that if somebody is abusing you physically, somebody is trying to uh, you must have uh, learned what are private parts. Somebody is trying to disrupt that. Somebody is trying to come to your personal space. That person's uh, id, that instant gratification is overpowering it. Okay? He or she does not have that ego strength to control it. You need to identify these kind of people. So, the people who do these kind of things, they abuse children, they beat them, they, do, they harm them, they try to intrude in their personal space. These are the people, despite being adults, they are not children who, are, who want instant food, but they want some other instant gratification, some other satisfaction. And that is compelling them to do certain things. So, if and why do these people do this? Because there has been some environmental changes. Okay? There has been some behavioral changes which is why they behave like this. Their ego strength is very low or too high. Okay? So, you should always be aware of these kind of people 
and now that you have grown up you are in your growing stages you understand these concepts try to weigh options try to see that i am balanced and i do not let my id or super ego overpower me i will use my ego strength and tell myself this is right this is wrong these are the morals i have been taught and i should be restricting to that wasn't this exciting in the next lessons we are going to now see the stages of your life and how it forms your personality type so thanks for watching and take out some time and think about what is good what is bad and what are the morals that has been taught to you thank you and we'll see you in the other side